Okay, guys, good morning, and welcome to our team call this morning, October 8th. And I'm super excited to start these calls, the Coach Spotlight calls. Um, I really think they're going to help us all get to know each other a lot more, which is going to bond us and get us closer as a team. But to also hear everybody's story um, with Beachbody. And it's a great way for us to give each other props as a team and to, you know, share. A lot of times we might not have our own success stories yet or things like that to share, but we can share from our team and things that we've learned about each other um, on these calls. So I'm really excited and I'm excited to hear everybody's story and to hear how Beachbody has changed them so far um, and has changed their lives. So let me screen share really quick just so I can. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Okay. I want to share just real, real quick, just to give shout outs for um, last month. But I'm excited to do these coach spotlights. So I wanted to welcome all of our newer coaches. Um, these are our new coaches that signed up last month. Um, we had nine new coaches as a team. So that's awesome. So if you look at it, we have changed all of these people's lives with the first step of them getting started on their health and fitness journey. So to me, that is a really, really big deal. Um, that's why we do what we do is to help change people's lives. You know, doing this own journey has changed our own lives and we want to pay it forward. So we started here. I mean, I know there's other lives that's changed because not everybody signed as a coach, but all of these people's lives are going to be changed with their fitness journey, as well as the things that have changed us as beach body coaches. So. Um, I wanted to give another shout out to everybody from last month with their points on the board. Everybody did a great job PV wise and success club wise. Um, total of 12 lives changed from our team. So I really love that each month we are changing many, many lives um, and putting them into our challenge groups and really staying focused with them as their coach and making sure that they get everything they can out of their journey. So I wanted to give you guys all props. Everybody did a really great job last month. Reminder, because it's in a few weeks, do not forget to register for a Super Saturday near you. Um, best way to find the Super Saturday is when you're logged into your back office. If you go to events, you can search your state and find an area closest to you that has a Super Saturday event. These events should be non-negotiable. They are not expensive. Um, and if there isn't one in your area or one that you want to drive to, then host your own. I mean, it could just be you and your mom sitting in your living room. As long as you're learning the information, Beachbody's going to send you the slide. They're going to send you all the information. So that way you are not left in the dark and you are not waiting for us to post in the team page all of the new fun things that are happening. Um, and from what I understand, I actually think they're going to be doing another health bet. So that might be something that might be on our Super Saturday slides. So you want to make sure you do not miss any of that information. You don't want to be one of the last people knowing what's going on. because Then your challengers might be hearing it from somebody else posting about it. Um, reminder that our team is doing our second Super Saturday event. We actually have 18 tickets sold so far. So I'm super, super excited. If you have not gotten your ticket yet, please do so. We need to make sure that we have all the tickets sold. Um, stop it dogs. <laughs> you guys have your kids. I have the crazy dogs. Um, we have to make sure that we have all our tickets sold so we have an idea of how many people so we can have the proper amount of everything that we need to run our Super Saturday event. So please, please, please make sure you get your ticket. I would love to see all the local coaches there. There's no reason for you not to. It is a very, very cheap event. I think our Super Saturday is probably the cheapest one because um, we do not have to pay for our hall. We got our hall free from the fire department. It's their, you know, union hall that they use. And, um, I made the tickets, cheap. the tickets really cheap, but I want to be able to give back. So the proceeds are going back to St. Jude Children's Hospital, which I actually got a call from them yesterday, it was either yesterday or the day before, of them thanking us um, for our donation from the last Super Saturday. So, I mean, I mailed it out right after, so it took them a long time to get to it. But they actually gave me a phone call, and the girl wants me to call her back. So I'm going to chat with her because I want to see if I can get somebody from there to come and talk at our Super Saturday event and talk about what the donations are going for. So please, please, please make sure you get your ticket. So now to hear from this beautiful lady. 
So in case you guys didn't hear my video on the team page, I just want to give you a quick recap of what this coach spotlight is going to be about. Um, I want to hear from everyone on the team. So eventually everyone on this team is going to do a coach spotlight. So if you don't volunteer, I've already had a couple people volunteer. Um, so we have somebody for November. I have someone for December. So, you know, I'm trying to do at least one coach spotlight a month. Are you still in Shakeology all over yourself? <laughs> um, hi, Alex. <laughs> Tara said hi. Hey. Um, so I want to hear where your life was before you started this journey, where your life is now during this journey, and where you are striving to have your life go. So I'm super excited to hear all of these stories, um, but we are going to start with Miss Tara's story. I'm just trying to get out of this screen share here. Bye, honey. Bye, honey. <laughs> Tara said bye, honey. I'll see you later. Okay, I'm going to mute myself, so Tara... Hi guys, can everybody hear me? Cool. All right, so um, we're not learning anything, to, so to say. Um, Tanya asked me to share my story, and as some of you guys know, it's been a pretty long road. Um, what I'm gonna do, I actually, when I went to visit my mom for her 70th birthday a couple weeks ago, I was on the plane and like, a bolt of lightning hit me and I pulled out my uh, my laptop on the uh, airplane and I wrote my story so um, I feel that the only way you're gonna get my complete story is if I read it so if you guys could bear with me um, I tend to get a little emotional so if I don't uh, read it I don't think that I'm going to be able to really share properly but then after I read it then you know I'm gonna just kind of open it up and have a dialogue so here I go so I joined Beachbody as a discount coach in April 2014 and gosh that seems like a lifetime ago at the time I had Olivia who had just turned three and Owen who was just six months old I had finished my maternity leave three months before which in my opinion is way too soon for any mother I changed jobs so I so I could get closer to home instead of commuting at least an hour and a half each way into work and hated leaving the house every day to bring my babies to daycare so I could make just about enough money to pay for that daycare and contribute the minimum to my household. With, hmm, hold on, sorry. With both of my children, I suffered from pretty bad postpartum depression. I think that when Owen was born, I had no choice but to force myself through it because now there was not only an infant, but also my little girl that needed mommy's attention. I did not medicate myself or seek treatment because I convinced myself that I did not have the time and did not want to be all hopped up on meds. I bought into the belief that doing whatever it takes to get myself better was not necessary and that it would pass, but it didn't. I was a shell of my formal, former social exuberant and happy self. My marriage suffered for it. My children did not have the benefit of having mommy in her full capacity. I was miserable, hopeless, sad, unsatisfied with my life. I literally cried each morning when I drove to work. I worked just to get things done, and my spirit was dead. I get the all too familiar empty feeling in the pit of my stomach now as I write this. One day in my usual fog, I was Facebook surfing when I came across a post from which it would turn out my coach, Tanya. It was really short and said something along the lines of, where are my fellow mommies at? Who wants to get fit and healthy? I immediately commented, I do, not knowing how, the cha how life changing those two words would wind up being. Tanya messaged me on Facebook and set up a time to talk on the phone. We didn't know each other personally, but we had so many f friends in common, and she seemed so genuinely concerned, I took that leap of faith. At the time, I did not know that I had any faith in anything anymore, but boy, would that change. When she called, she wanted to know what I wanted from life. I shared with her all the stuff I wrote earlier and told her that I wanted to get my life back, get to find myself again. I needed to be here for my family and friends or they would suffer right along with me. 
After asking me a bunch of questions, she told me about the 21 day fix in Shakeology. I had nothing to lose and everything to gain. She told me about how I could receive 25% off my products by becoming a coach. And I was like, um, how can I coach anybody when I'm totally lost? She told me that I did not have to do anything for anyone but myself. So I agreed. I got the program and it just sat next to my DVD player for days, weeks, and months. It literally had dust on it. When Tanya would check in with me, I would yes her to death, but I still did nothing. Let me back up a little bit. In December 2013, I joined Weight Watchers. I was searching for something, an outlet of some kind. I would go to Saturday morning meetings and listen to all the success stories from others, and I would hysterically cry the entire meeting. Tears of joy for other people's success, but deep down, tears of despair because I knew that this was not doing anything for me. I know that Weight Watchers works for many, but I felt like a failure. I needed to get real help. I needed to talk to someone or get on some kind of meds, something. So I met a woman that did Reiki. She did a Reiki session with me. And when she was done, she told me that there was a lot of turmoil in my head and in my heart. When she was sharing this with me, I completely broke down. It was the weirdest, most accurate thing that I've ever experienced. Those tears felt like they were opening me up from the inside like I was being cleansed. I felt something shift, and the first thing I did was pay attention. Then I started watching Tanya's journey. I followed her Facebook posts and began to get inspired because she was just like me. She worked, she had kids, she was married, we were the same age, but the difference was, she was happy. I was blinded by my postpartum and the stress of being a full-time working mommy with two small children. Owen was the most beautiful little baby boy, but he was constantly sick, and I was eternally stressed from sleep deprivation and constant worry of what tomorrow was going to bring. So one day, I took that cellophane off the 21 Day Fix DVD. I put it in, and I worked out. I felt a little better. What? This made me feel better. So the next day, I did it again, and I did my calculations to figure out how to use the containers and I ate well. I kept it up for the most part. Planning my food with the containers was simple, and making the Shakeology was simple, and working out at home for no more than 32 minutes a day it was simple. Holy shit, this program was working. At the end of the three weeks, I lost 11 pounds. I finally felt something more than the utter despair, and I was so proud of myself. The next time I spoke to Tanya, I told her that I now understood why she shared this with me, and I want to know how to do the same. I thought to myself, if I could make someone else feel like this, how can I not share it? Over the next few months, I started very casually sharing what I learned, and just as I thought, women that I knew felt the exact same way. They wanted more. I wanted more. I wanted to feel good so I did not see my children as a chore, but as the joy that they are. I wanted to be the wife my husband fell in love with, not the woman that he felt he had to rescue from herself. And I learned, well, now I knew in an abstract way already, but still, that there are many women that go through the mo these motions of life, not because they want to, but because they feel like there is nothing else to do. But now I knew that there was something else, and I had to tell them. So I started talking to people. I started posting about the program, what the program had done to, for me. I wanted to shout it out from the hilltops. Now, when I would talk to Tanya, I was motivated to do this right. I wanted to be able to tell women like me that we are still us. And I wanted to be able to make money with this company because I wholeheartedly believe in what they are about. If I could help enough people, I could pay for my products and coaching fee. But wait, pump the brakes. That wasn't happening. Sometimes I would make money here and there, never consistently. But soon I learned that I wasn't consistently successful because I wasn't being consistent. How would anyone believe in something if I ever appeared, then disappeared over and over again? This had gone on for well over a year. I would tell Tanya that I want to build my business and I would go hard and be committed for a few weeks and then I'd stop. And then I'd start and I'd stop. 
I certainly would not believe in somebody that watched doing what someone that I was watching doing that. So why did I think differently about the people who were watching me? Blah, blah, blah. Fast forward to the spring of 2015. I had heard about this thing that Beachbody does called Summit. It's the annual convention of all team Beachbody coaches that was going to be held in July 2015 in Nashville, and I wanted to go. I had bought my ticket earlier that year, but money was tight, so I canceled. But I had been staying in touch with Tanya. She was now way more than my coach. She had quickly become my mentor, my confidant, and my friend. She knew more than just my fitness journey. She talked to me about everything. She made me feel like I mattered. She was so bummed that I was not going to summit, but she never made me feel like I disappointed her. I promised her I did not care what the hell happened in my life. I was going with her to Nashville for that 2016 summit. And we worked together to make sure that I would not break that promise. Now here we are in 2016. I am now talking to Tanya at least once a week and every time I told her that I was broke and I could not possibly justify going to Nashville, she told me do not cancel this, you need this. And she was right. Not only did I need this for me, but I also need, my family needed this for me. And let me tell you something, it was not an easy road to get to Nashville. First, the girls I planned to room with canceled, and that meant I had no place that I could afford to stay. Then when Tanya found a solution, that fell through too. And you know what her and the other coaches did to make sure I could go? They changed their entire plan so we could all go to a cheaper place, and we all scrambled around so there were enough people in each room so that we could all afford it, and we made it happen. Why? because that is what we do for each other. We will move mountains for each other so we all succeed. So July rolls around and I am off to Nashville. Little did I know that Nashville would be the most profound experience of my entire life. I experienced highs that I have never known possible and came face to face with such reality that I was floored. When I returned on August 1st, I was no longer the sad, struggling mother wife, friend, and person that, will, that people just got used to. My purpose and vision has been so clear since then. I know what I have to do. I sat down with my husband and shared what I had experienced, and I asked him if he was willing to support me. He told me that he loved me, and whatever made me happy was only going to be better for our family. So I dug my heels in, and I started, for real this time. Since then, I have worked out faithfully, never missing two, more than two days a week. I have eaten right, not always perfectly, but a hell of a lot better. I drink my Shakeology religiously, and now Tanya and I laugh when I stress that I missed my workout yesterday because there was a time, not so long ago, where I would be impressed if I worked out only once a month, and now five times a week is a slow week for me. And guess what? I'm seeing results. I have lost over 15 pounds, now close to 20. I feel better about myself than I ever have. My husband reaps the benefits of my happiness, as do my children. My friends are reaching out to me to tell me how I am inspiring them through my posts on Instagram, Facebook, and in person. Sounds just like I felt about Tanya. And now I feel real purpose. I know that I will become a success not only with Beachbody, but also with my life. I would not be where I am today, sitting here talking about the positivity that flows through my veins if it were not for that one post that happened to appear on my newsfeed. God led me to that post. And I can only hope that God leads you to witness my journey. I promise to continue to share my journey because the inspiration goes both ways. Without the, all of those who constantly root for me to succeed, I would not be so driven. You all hold me accountable just as I hopefully just as I am hopefully speaking to your soul that you are able to do this also. I'm not different than you, except that I know my value and I know that it is necessary to take care of myself first so I can be a better person for all of those around me. If you can see in yourself what I see in so many of you, your journey would be on a path like mine. Because we walk side by side in this life. I will not let you fall just as you do not let me fall. So I thank you for that. And let's do this together. That's it.
So I'm surprised I didn't like cry because every single time I read that and when I was writing it, pouring tears. But um, I wanted to read it because like I said, you know, I think that the essence of my story would be lost if I kind of went off the cuff because there are so many feelings that churn up inside of me. Um, because I remember the person that I was before and it's not the people, it's not the person that you guys know, you know, and it's, um, I, I, there were like two major changing points in my life. The first one was that post that Tanya did and she literally was standing with her family in a bikini looking all like a hot little mama on the beach. <laughs> and it was like two lines. Um, and the, and the second, um, change was summit. Um, you know, Amy and I roomed together and anybody that would have crossed our paths would have probably thought that we had been friends forever. Um, there's a connection that you find with these people that you're not, um, I don't think you could really get anywhere else because everybody's there for the same reason. And there are the people that are like Lindsay Matway and, you know, all the other people that ha are like sick, successful, and they have like killer bodies. But then there are people that are there that are like 100 pounds overweight. And everybody has a smile on their face because I think that they feel safe there. Um, I know I felt safe there. You know, I didn't feel like people were like, you don't look like a coach, you know, because people there were, um, they're there to uplift you and they're, and they're there to share, you know, their successes. And um, you could be a fly on the wall and never say anything. And I think that your heart would be so filled by the time you walked out of, out of summit that you um, could probably share a story, you know, really similar to mine. And um, that's why Tanya wanted me to share mine today. So I don't know, that's kind of it. <laughs> I'm very proud of you for sharing that. Of course, I cried, <laughs> even though I have read that already. I cried. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, seeing, like listening to your story and hearing you tell it just, it, I like relived it as you told the story. Like I remember our first phone conversation and I look back to that first phone conversation to yesterday's conversation and we have totally different types of conversations. We're both totally different people. We've grown so much over that time frame of that one first phone call. Um, and that's what completely amazes me about all of this, about the coaching and about all of this is, not only watching ourselves grow, but watching each other. You know what I mean? Like, you'll have this. You'll look back like a year from now with one of the coaches that you chatted with on the phone and where they are a year later and they're talking and they're upbeat and they're uplifting everybody else that's listening to them talk and you're watching them post and you're watching people comment and like, when you posted your, your transformation picture, which is so out of your comfort zone, something that... I was like, she has to do it, but I don't know if she'll ever do it because I know how you are and I know that that's something you don't want to do. But when you post it, look at all the people that you inspired just by that one post. Yeah. One post. That's why I always say all the time, share, share, share. I don't care what you share. I don't care if you share something that you think is like the stupidest thing in the world because to somebody else, it could be life changing. Yeah. And I didn't even like, you know, some people are like, okay, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to. Um, post my my before and after my transformation like at x amount of time and there was no plan I was looking through my uh, it was right at the end of health bet um, I was looking through my uh, my phone and I found the before picture because I didn't take the before picture for the health bet right I, I had taken it you know a, a, probably about a month or two before that and I was like, I can't, like, you know, when you look at yourself every day, you can't really see the difference. So I was just like, I just want to take the same picture and see just to compare for myself. Right. And then when I saw it, I was like, I guess I have to share it because isn't this what the, the whole point of it? 
And, yep. you know, there was no script. I didn't write and rewrite it. I, I wrote it. And I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like sometimes um, if you write and rewrite and rewrite, it just becomes almost like, um, like a scripted post. And it, it kind of doesn't feel so raw. Yeah. And I feel like the, the rawness and the vulnerability and the honesty you know, if there's a typo, fuck it. it. As long as it doesn't like change the meaning of the sentence. I was going to say that. That's why I always have typos. <laughs> she does to she dies. Like, yeah, you don't want right. you want to change that typo. <laughs> I I don't really I I don't really um plan what I'm going to say, except for that beach body story because I have right. <laughs> but right. um. Yeah, I feel like the the more honest and um, genuine you are, I think that that touches more people because our life is in a clean, pretty, non-typoed script, you know? Exactly. Our, our life is messy and sometimes it's hilarious and sometimes it's really shitty, you know? And if, mm -hmm. they, if, if everybody thinks that... Um, Everything, wait, what does what Tanya say? Butterflies and rainbows, right? Is that what you say? Mm -hmm. Butterflies and rainbows are all the time. They may not feel like it's um, something that they can attain on themselves because they, they can't, can't relate like to you. Mm -hmm. They can't relate to you because it's like, well, of course she can work out. Of course she has time to make a shake because her life is perfect. She has the time, you know? So you have to, you definitely have to be, you have to be real and you have to be raw and you have to think about it. Beach body coaches nowadays are a dime a dozen. Every time you turn around, somebody has a friend that's a beach body coach. So you have to be genuine. You just have to be you because that's, to me, that's the key to each one of our businesses is us being ourselves because that's what's going to attract our tribe. That's what's going to attract the people that, that we want to help is just us being us. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys were on that the Fit Family call a couple weeks back when Mike um, Greenberg did it, but he kept on saying, "There's only one Beach Body coach. There's just one Beach Body coach, and that's you, mm -hmm. because everybody has the same products to sell, and everybody has the same workouts to sell, and everybody can do them the same way. But the only reason why anybody is going to want you to be your co to be their coach." Is because you're you. Right. They're signing with you. They're not signing because of the product. That's why you have to be true to yourself. Because if you're posting one way and then you get them on the phone and you talk to them a totally different way, then they, that rubs them the wrong way. You know, so it's okay to get ideas of how to share from other people, but you have to post true to you so people know who you truly are. Um, that's why I'm known for the typo queen because I just freaking want to get the information out there so fast, you know, that I don't care. So, um, which I don't know if you've noticed, I've gotten better about. I actually look for my typos before I click post. <laughs> um, but you definitely have to make sure that you're true to you. So Tara, let me ask you, do you have your ticket for next year's summit? I do. Awesome. Who well, else? We left with Nashville. I thought you did. <laughs> so who else on here has their ticket already? Nice. Yes. This one's going to be a blast. Um, Who's been in New Orleans? Not me. Are you guys serious? Nobody's been in New Orleans? It's awesome. Nope. Never been there. But just so you guys know, it'll probably be there two years in the same place. Usually they sign a two-year contract. That's why we were in Nashville two years. So we'll be in New Orleans two years. Who knows where it'll go after that. Um, you can go to Staten Island. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> We're all going to come stay at your house. <laughs> we'll all bring our sleeping bags. <laughs> um, did anybody have any questions for Tara or any comments or feedback that you might want to give her? And She's I apologize to anybody that got on our Saturday oh, call. When we were in Summit and I couldn't talk because I was crying too hard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What were you saying, Natalie? I'm just, I'm so proud of you, Tara. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Yeah, it's not easy to tell your story. Um, Belle's proud of you. Did you hear her? Yes, yeah, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's not easy to be vulnerable and tell your story. At least in this setting, it, hopefully it made it a little bit easier for you because you're telling it to the team. But now I want to challenge you to share your story more on Facebook. I mean, it was. I would love to see you, even if you're reading it, 
put the paper up next to your phone and I would love to see your story live on Facebook. Because I want people, I, I'm telling you, it's gonna be a game changer for you. I know how scared you are to do it, but I'm telling you when you do, you're going to inspire so many other people because they're going to connect to you and they're going to be like, oh my God, I feel exactly how she's saying she used to feel is how I am feeling right now while I'm watching her and listening to her talk. Because I was very afraid to go live on my, like, I used to tell my story in an event. I was very afraid to just go live and tell my story on my newsfeed. And I went, I did it in an event and I actually had somebody message me and say, I had no idea that's what your life was like. I thought your life has always been what I see on Facebook right now. I'm like, no, I had to voluntarily repossess a car. I was like, no, my life was not rainbows and butterflies. Um, so people don't realize the struggles that we've lived through and what we have overcome. And then when they see somebody that they're watching on a daily basis with all these posts in there, they feel like they already know you through Facebook. You know, like how we feel. Like, you know, we feel like we knew some of these coaches at Summit just because of watching them on Facebook. So when we meet them in person, we feel like we already know them. So they feel like they already know you. Then once you tell that story, they're going to connect with you even more because most of them, if not all of them, probably feel that same way. They probably feel exactly how you felt before you saw my post. Yep. So you like so crazy because I feel like I don't even know that girl anymore. I don't. That girl was so long ago that I had to relive it through you telling your story, and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. Yep, I remember that too. I remember I would always check in with you, and I would I knew you were yesing me to death. I was like, I know she's not pressing play. I know she's not doing all of it. But that's okay. I'm just going to keep messaging her. Eventually, she'll, she'll do it. She'll do it. But um, somebody else is going to, they're, they're going to gravitate to you because they're going to, they're, they felt that same way. I felt the way that you felt after having my kids. So listening to your story and listening to you tell it, you know, reminded me. And I kind of went through memory lane when I had my two kids. Same thing. I had to work just to pay a stranger to take care of my kids. Like, what, what, what was the purpose, you know? And it made me miserable. But I thought if I worked, I'd feel better. So you definitely, I want to challenge you to do that. And like I said, you don't have to go off the cuff. You can just have the paper up by, like, the camera so you're looking at them when you're talking and, and read it. Even if you read not all of it, you only read, like, one portion, I think you should read the whole thing because that's your entire story. Um, and, and, and seeing the post and then taking that step and then kind of just still waiting and then going to summit and going all in type thing. Um, I, you know, I really think I want to really challenge you to share that. You know, and it's a lot better. It's a lot better when you verbally say it than if you just took the words and copied and pasted it with a picture because someone's not going to read that whole thing. Yeah, well, that's why I've never done it. Oh my mm -hmm. God, that baby is so cute. <laughs> I know. That's like, that's Whitney's twin. Who's <laughs> just like her? Um, but I, I would love to challenge you to do that. And I hope that you do it. And like, text me before you do it because I have to get on live with you. Even though I subscribe, so I should get a notification. When you go live, I try to subscribe to each and every one of you so I get a notification when you go live so I can get on with you guys. Um, but I do... That's your challenge, is to go live and tell that story. I don't care if you cry. <laughs> if you cry, you cry. Just have a tissue in case you cry. Have you seen how many times I ended up crying on my news feed? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You need to be raw and be real. <laughs> Christmas tree. So. Buy in bulk. <laughs> <laughs> but I am very, very proud of you for being the first coach spotlight call. You did awesome telling your story. I wouldn't change any of it. I wouldn't add to it. Like you hit on all the points that you needed to handle. And now you will yeah. notice your story is going to change as you grow and as Beachbody changes. The beginning of how you went into it will always be the same. But your story, you're going to add to it, and there's going to be different things to it, you know. And when you go to your next summit, there's going to be something else different that's going to happen. Or if you go to a Super Saturday, or if you decide to start a Super Saturday and host your own, you know, there'll be little added things into your story. But the basis of your story will always stay the same. Um, I just wanted to say something really quickly before we end this call. Um, 
It happens to be that the three people, I'm gonna cry now. Oh. The three people that had everything to do with me getting to Summit are on this call right now. And I really, really wanna thank Amy and Lonnie and Tanya. Oh. <laughs> Lonnie's on mute, but I saw her say, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> I love you, girly. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. We love you. And I, I told you from the year prior, you are not not going to the next summit. You promised me you were going. We were going to figure out a way. I didn't care if we all had to sleep in a car and I'd rent a car when we got up there. We were going to do whatever was possible for you to go. I wasn't going to let any of y'all back out. Yeah, well. <laughs> well. Well, that sometimes was, there are circumstances that I can't go in there and try to be superwoman and make it work. But you're not missing the next know. one, Miss Lonnie. Oh, no, I'm not. You're I already told you guys know. Lonnie has got to be the most generous, <laughs> wonderful woman in the whole world because she was supposed to go to Summit and she couldn't. And she knew that if she didn't pay her way, I wasn't going to be able to go. And she paid for it, even though she wasn't there. And I don't even know. I don't even know her. I mean, I know you, but. <laughs> and that means the world to me because a big reason why I am where I am is because of you. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. I knew that you and Amy were, Amy had been talking about money for months about not being able to go. And I knew as soon as they came to me and said, you know, that I had to appear in court that, you know, and that I wasn't gonna be able to go. When I tell you guys that I cried in the middle of a round table filled with 12 attorneys hysterically, called the judge to reschedule. I mean, it was, I threw a tantrum like a five-year-old. <laughs> But when it came to the point where I knew there was nothing I could do and that I couldn't go, I couldn't be the reason that you guys couldn't go. So I looked at my husband and I said, I'm still paying for my hotel. And I don't, you know, and it, I, I couldn't, I, it was hard enough that I couldn't go, but to be the reason, like we already had, one person back out. So we were all already scrounging, you know, you guys were already, who else? And then we had a second one, I think, uh, right? It was two people back back Heather and Candy. Candy and Heather. I thought it was just Candy and then me. Yeah, my, well, Heather was like. Oh, and Heather, right, I totally forgot. Um, so, I mean. It wasn't like the money changed a little bit. It changed substantially. Dynamically, like. <laughs> I was at the point Thank that I was Lonnie. like, everybody just sleep on the floor in my room. I don't care. We'll figure it out. I'll throw the kids on the floor and you guys can sleep in the sleeper sofa. The kids aren't going to give a shit. I, you guys just needed to be there. So yeah, it went from five to two. Yeah. So, I mean, it, really it was down to like the last day. Uh -huh. it, it was. I begged the other hotel. I was like, oh, I know that you guys stopped the, the fit family like package deal of price, but is there any way that you could just give us a couple rooms with that price, please? And what's awesome is I'm telling you, like the gods were in our favor because Mike had told me, are you serious? You got the price because someone just called yesterday and they wouldn't give them the price. I'm like, I guess I just. God, like I. I tell you this all the time. Um, actually, Jen Greenberg had posted last night that she was going to start a blog about our, our team environment. And she asked what she liked best about it. Uh -huh. And that's what I said. I feel like there is a spiritual connection with, uh, with us. I, don't, I think it goes so far beyond like we're a bunch of health and fitness coaches that are selling the same product. Like... Things, things like happen that shouldn't have happened. You know, like Tanya said, we got the block price. Um, we, it, Lonnie was able to not only pay for us, but then she didn't even lose out on the money because her boss paid for her, paid her back. You know, like nobody lost out. And it was like, if you don't believe in God, then whatever you believe in, you can thank that 
entity for because mm -hmm. and I have and as you can see like you mentioned summit and people just cry <laughs> it's not because they beat you and torture you and you're <laughs> doing like horrible things if you can get to summit if there's one event that you go to that has Beachbody's name on it, you have to go to Summit. Because I remember sitting on my front porch with my husband thinking I couldn't go. And we were having a lot of problems in our relationship. And he didn't want me to go because he was like, it's just gonna be a big old fucking hoopla. And I said to him, if I don't go, I'm afraid that I'm going to be internally broken and not be able to fix myself and the regret that I will live with. And I feel like I would have almost probably held it against him from like holding me back from this. I don't know why I knew, but I knew that it was going to be a breakthrough. And you know, I can tell you like how wonderful it is because the oh, told me and Amy told me and I saw stories. There were points at Summit where like everybody was kind of chit chatting and I was so laser focused on what the speakers were talking about and not even so much the teaching opportunities because what you all learn at Summit was like, whoa. The most profound moments at Summit for me were the people that were talking about themselves. They weren't talking about <laughs> business. Um, and when Gary V got up and, and spoke, he's not like all touchy feely and I didn't like cry, but he got into my guts. Like I was, cause I am very much of the same personality as him, like quick to drop F bomb, quick with a sarcastic remark. If people don't know the turmoil inside of me, they think I'm a very witty, like just funny person. And at one time, all of that sarcasm talk about a coping mechanism, it was just to mask a lot of bullshit in my life. Um, but now I'm just sarcastic because I. <laughs> But if you can get to summit, if you have to pawn your children, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> if whatever it takes to get there, get there. And if you don't think that we will all sleep on the floor for you, <laughs> ask anybody that's been there and they would. Mm -hmm. I swear to you. What I love about this team, I mean, other teams like under our big umbrella are similar from what they tell. Um, but that's what I love about our little family that we have growing here is that that's, and we just do it because we care. We love each other. We might all live in different areas, but you know, when one of ours comes to town, we all try to get there if we can. Or if one of ours is having a, a hard time with something, we're all there giving support, you know, and that is something that Amy and I talked about at Winter Summit. Like, we're like, that's what we want. Like, we want our culture to be like inseparable like you're having something ha good happening you want to go right to the team and tell them you're having a hard time with something you want to go right to the team and tell them you know just like the other day Tara didn't want to press play and she texted me it was during the hurricane she texted me and she was like help me I am so not motivated I don't want to do anything she had me and Kayla and Ryan we were all like get off your butt press play <laughs> and get your workout done. And then she went live doing her workout and Kayla and Ryan are on my Facebook typing to her. Yeah, you know, so like the whole house is like rooting for her. Alex is on live with her, I was on live with her because that's what this team is about. We want to bring our kids into this also. I and feel like an adopted it. member of telling his family. <laughs> you know, and for our, our kids to grow up with this surrounding, can you just think of like, if this was when we were kids and it was our parents and we're watching them eat healthy and we're watching them make a shake every day and we're watching them get on these calls and we're watching them root each other on on Facebook and going live and helping each other, can you imagine what kind of like childhood that would have been with all that positivity and all that like awesomeness? 
Like, so it's not just for us or it's not just for the team. It's our families too. I've watched it change Alex. In look at, her, look at Kayla. Kayla's coaching a soccer team. Yeah. You know, Kayla, forward. Mm-hmm. she can't be a coach yet. So she wanted to coach seven-year-olds in soccer because that's what she knows. And that's her passion. So she decided to pay it forward, you know, and then last night she's texting me, mom, I need you to be my personal trainer because homecoming's in a month and I want my arms to look nice in my dress. <laughs> Mike, sure. I'll help you. We'll put together a workout plan and we'll put it in your phone. So when you're at your dad's, you can do it there too, you know, but it's just, just, if you look at all those little things and you look at how much we're changing our own families on top of it, it's not just changing ourselves. And that's like, to me, that's the biggest thing, like to watch how this team came together to make sure that we all were able to still go to summit and to watch things like that happen, you know, or to watch when somebody's going through turmoil and the whole team goes from right over here to over to that person to almost like surround them and take care of them and like protect them until they can feel better. And that's just that, that was my dream of, of what I wanted this team to be. And that's what me and Amy talked about the whole winter summit. We were up till like two in the morning one morning, which is so past both of our bedtime. You know, <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> we're so passionate about where we wanted this team and the, and the, the people that we wanted to attract to be part of this team. Like we wanted to make sure only those genuine, caring, loving hearted people were the people that joined our team because we didn't want one bad seed. We don't want one bad person that is not that type of person to be on the team because we want the team to stay that way, you know, and to be that way and to support each other and to be there for each other. Yeah. I definitely think that it's something to be said that my soon to be three year old, you know, flips through Facebook and he's like, Tanya, <laughs> like it's his girlfriend. <laughs> I love when he FaceTimes with me. And, you know, like, you know, we see Annalise and we see Ryan and we see the babies and we see Lucy and we know them. Right. Like we're watching these little lives like be formed and like, you know, one day we're going to see Lucy and before you know it, I don't know oh, where yeah. Natalie is at. <laughs> she left us she's probably changing lucy's diaper but yeah we're gonna see them and they're gonna be coaches before we know it kayla's gonna be a coach on our team on one of these calls and lucy is gonna be starting kindergarten you know it's like we're gonna (laughs) her eyes and whitney's little baby is gonna you know like be like starting school it's like Mm -hmm. this is not just me and you and you and you and you and you it's all of us. It's like a, a like it's a big envelopment of love. Like, for instance, I mean, Amy was in Orlando because we have impeccable timing. But when I was down in Fort Lauderdale, Christina and Albert came out to lunch with us. I wasn't having lunch with Tanya. I was having lunch for my mom's seventieth birthday, and Tanya never met my mom ever. And she brought her flowers. And my mom has been going through a very hard time in her life because she lost her husband unexpectedly in June. He had a heart attack on his birthday. She found him in his in bed. I mean, she's been devastated. And I think that Tanya knew that, you know. And I think that because the people that we are, you know, she could have very easily on a Saturday afternoon gone and done whatever she wanted. Christina and I have talked like twice. Albert and I have never talked other than liking each other's Facebook posts, but we all came together and not only did they do it for me, but they did it for my family. And when we left and when I was talking to my mom and my older brother, they were like, they're so glad that I have this circle of love around me because you don't find this, especially in this fucked up world where everybody's trying to hurt each other. Like we're trying to build each other up. We're trying to build up perfect strangers because these perfect strangers are lost. You know, they, all they see is the bullshit that we see, but we don't focus on the bullshit. We, we look at it and see how far we could push it away from ourselves and the people that we care about because it's necessary. Because if we continue on the road that this crap is bringing us down, it's, it's going to be devastating, not even for us, because we're old enough to be able to inform an opinion of how we feel about things. But if all our children know is darkness and devastation, what kind of life is that for them? You know, when you were gone, Natalie, we were talking about Lucy turning five, by the way, but whatever. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> like, Natalie, where are you? We were saying how, you know, before we know it, Lucy's going to be in kindergarten and Whitney's baby's going to be in school. And, you know, it's a whole family thing. I have Lee. She's my little Snapchat buddy. We Snapchat back and forth all the time. Mm-hmm. She'll send me a picture and be like, I love this picture of myself. Mm-hmm. I love Annalise. She is the cutest oh kid God. ever. She, me and her Snapchat all day long. And then when I don't Snapchat with her, I'll text Amy and be like, I'm my Snapchat, buddy. She hasn't Snapchatted me in like three days. She's like, because I haven't given her my phone. I'm surprised she hasn't made her grand entrance. Um, yeah, I come and said hello. I know she does. At, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> She's probably she loves it. She loves being a part of it, too. She asks me all the time, are you having a call? Is everybody going to be on it? Like, it's But she saw you, right? Because then when she gets on it, she's very like... Hi. And she always says, I love my mommy. This is my mommy, and I love her. <laughs> she gets on live with you. But it's, it's like stuff like that. I don't just bond with you, but I bond with you and Lee and the boys. And, and that's what we talked about at Summit. We talked about families, all of our families being one big family, not just us. Mm-hmm. That's why when we do our local meetups, like, I want everybody's whole family to come. I want to get to know your kids. I want to hang out with your kids. I want to get to know the spouses. I want to hang out. I want the, all the husbands to get to know each other. And they can all go hang out over there and talk football that we don't care about. And we can talk about whatever we want to talk about. And it's just one big family. And that's what, that's what I love about this team. It's like I love all your faces, but that's my, my, my most favorite thing about this team is how we have bonded into one big family. You know, Natalie comes down and we always make sure we make at least one day where we at least go on a really long walk or we work out and I pass out in the garage or <laughs> whatever happens to happen. That's what happens. But we have the ceiling fans. <laughs> I have fans now, so passing out doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> but Natalie, were you like, uh... <laughs> She's on side, and I was like, "All right, I'm just gonna keep going." Because, well, before that, she was in the freezer in the garage, like trying to cool down. I mean, it was hot. And then, like a couple minutes later, Alex came out, and he's like, "Hey," and I've never met him before. I'm like, "Hi," and he's will be out in a minute. So I didn't really know how bad it was. And she came back out. She's like, "You're almost fainted." I'm like, "Oh my!" God. But then I will finish my workout. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm good. I just won't use weights. I'll just do the movements. I just won't use weights. Alex, like, why don't you just watch her? I'm like, she's not going to come here from out of town and work out with me. And I'm just going to be like, good job. You're doing good. I was like, I'm going to go finish my workout. (laughs) But see, it's things like that. You know, when out of towners come in, we always try to do something, you know, and see each other because that's important to us. Is to see each other and, and do things with each other. And when we see somebody having a downtime, like we know each other so well that through text, I can tell when one of you guys is having a bad day. Just a text message, you know? Or I can tell by how the Facebook posts are if somebody's having a hard time and I'll text, okay, what's wrong? What's going on? Or I haven't seen you post, or I haven't seen this. What's going on? And that's, that's what we want it to be. And those are the type of people that we want to attract to the team. So I know. Um, Next month, we'll have Christy, um, one of our newer coaches. She wants to get on and talk about her story. So she is going to tell her story next month. And then I know Natalie is going to tell her story in December. Natalie's going to be invisible by then. Yeah. Natalie's going to be like, it's going to turn sideways. going to be like, wait, is she still on the call? Where'd she go? You're doing great with your transformation and your journey. I have to put the wide lens on so she actually looks like a normal. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. Um, So I'm excited to hear those stories. And like I said, we're trying to do one, one a month, but if somebody else wants to hop in for November or December, let me know and we'll just add another. And instead of me doing a training, I'd rather hear everybody's stories than, you know, do any type of training or whatever. And then I'd also, if you guys don't mind helping me out, I would love for you guys to post any trainings or anything like that that you feel you need so I can gear our team calls around that so I can make sure that I'm adding the value to you guys and helping you guys the best that I can. So if there's something you feel you're struggling with or something you want to learn more of, you know, post it in our team page. There's a possibility we might have already done a call on that and I might be able to send you the link so that way you can learn about it. But if I have not done a call on it, I want to be able to make sure that I'm helping you guys the best that I can. 
So please, in the team page, if there's something that you feel you that you would like to see a call on or like to see a training on, even if it's something that I can quickly go live just to teach it, I'll do that. Just I want to make sure that I help you guys the best that I can. And um, I think I told you guys, but it's funny that Jen said that she was going to start blogging about the team community. I made that Get Fit Crew team page for or like page for that purpose. I've been posting at least once a day on there something about the team, like when we go live on our calls and when you know we do our get togethers and stuff because I want to get the word out there of what our team is about. Um, so if anybody would like to be admin on that like page to post about our team as well to show the community of our team and what our team does, um, that was the whole purpose of that page is to get the word out there of what we do as a team and what, you know, because that's like we talk about, there's beach body coaches and beach body teams all over, but we need to show what we do as a team and the differences of what we are as a coach, you know, to see and attract the people that we're looking for to join our team. So that was the whole purpose of doing that. So if anybody wants to post in there or anything like that, let me know and then I'll make you admin because if you're not somebody in admin on the page, your post won't show. Um, but I did start that like page for that purpose so I can show our team community and what our family's all about. Did anybody have any questions for me or any questions for Tara or anything that they wanted to, to say or input before I end the call? Did you take a picture? I did. I took a candid shot. Come here. Say hi. They just got back from Dunkin' Donuts. Ooh. Do you see this? That chocolate milk is the creamiest chocolate milk. This is Olivia's favorite thing in the whole wide world. <laughs> but she can't have the wrapper on it. She has to take it off. And that's funny. I used to do that with my water bottles when I was little. She does it with her water bottles, and then she makes bracelets out of the ribbon. <laughs> that's cute. All right. Nobody has any, any other comments or any questions or anything like that or questions of anything coming up. Check your emails also um, because Beachbody sent out a survey about the health vet because I think they want to get everyone's feedback because I have a feeling they're going to be running another one very soon. So make sure you check your emails and do that survey because the more of us that can get, you know, information out there and survey how it was, the more that they'll be able to make their decision on if they're going to run another one or not. So make sure you check junk mail if you didn't get it in your email already. Um, yeah. And then for those that qualified, you would have gotten an email that you qualified. For those that did not qualify, you would have gotten an email saying you did not qualify. Um, and then for us that did qualify, you will get an email of what the dollar amount is that you can expect to get. So I'm excited to get that email. I think they said by the 10th, yeah. you know, by Monday or Tuesday next week, we should know what the dollar amount is. So that'll be really cool. So congratulations on your 43 cents. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's why I'm very interested to see what it is. Cause I wonder, I really wonder how many people really stuck to it and if they were all coaches or if challengers actually stuck, cause we had some good challengers on ours that stuck to the whole thing that aren't coaches. So I'm excited to kind of see what the dollar is to get an idea of how many people really stuck to it. So. Oh, you're back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's back. We lost her for a quick second. So did anybody, I took a picture so I can post it in the team page for anybody to utilize. I don't know if anybody else was able to get a snap a picture, but I did Before the blubbering. Yes, it was before the crying. Great. Um. <laughs> I have one completely unrelated question. Um, you know that thing that you use, that light that you use? Yeah, that one. Which one is it? Can you, can you post the link? <laughs> yeah. I will post the link. All right. But there is a way that you can earn it from me. Right. I'm giving some gifts. So if you hit Success Club last month, a gift already went out in the mail. But yes, Tara, I will post the link for you. <laughs> yeah, I love this light. See, now I bought the case, the Lumi case, and I did not like it because my phone always fell out of it. And then Jen got me this as a Success Club gift, and I use it all the time. It's been clipped to my laptop this whole time. Because even though I have all sorts of sunlight in my house, I feel like I always look dark. So I use that all the time. One. Love it. One. Love it, love it. All right, guys, well, have a good rest of your Saturday. I'm going to get my workout on because I have a date with Little Miss Amy over there. That's right. We have a, a leadership video that we're doing. Oh, gosh. So I got to get my workout done, and I have to take a shower before I get on that video. Why? You never shower for video. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. I go live a hot, sweaty mess. So what's the difference? I felt like you the other day when I went live and I was like, holy crap, my hair looks like this. Yeah, I look at myself and I'm like, whoa, I'm a hot mess. Let me fix myself a little bit. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to go finish my, I'm going to do my workout, finish my power hour, and get the rest of my day started. So if anybody, please, please, please post different ideas of trainings that you guys would like to see for calls, because like I said, you know, I'm here to add value and help you guys build your businesses and get you guys to that next level in your business and the next rank. Um, and in order to do that, I need to know what you guys need to learn. I need to know what you don't know and what you guys need to know more of. And Coach Basics dinners will be in full effect starting Monday. I wanted to remind everybody, you know, the ways that we're going to do things. Amy and I brainstormed and came up with a really great idea that you sign up. Their first step should be getting on this call. Once they go on this call, you put them into the Coach Basics Beginners, which later today, once we get the video up on that, in that group, we will be posting a link to that group. If you know you're going to be adding coaches into that group, I want you to join that group. So as you have new coaches, you add them immediately. They go on the team call, you add them into there. Coach Basics no longer will be, it starts on the, the first Monday of each month. It will be an ongoing open group, and our video will explain to them how to utilize the group, but every day is going to be in the files tab. So they can do all 16 days in one day if they want, or they can do 16 straight different days. But it'll be ongoing open so coaches no longer have to wait until the next Coach Basics to learn how to use the back office, to learn how to set up EFT, to understand what Success Club is. They can learn it immediately when they sign up as a coach. So no more waiting. Um, and then we will have Coach Basics Advance. That will be probably like the last Monday of each month when it will start so they can go through beginners. And then when they're done, we'll put them into the advanced. So I just wanted to let you guys know of that new system that we put into place. So that, we're going to be doing the video for that today. So we will definitely upload that video and make sure that we get the link in the team page. So look for that link later today so you can join because everybody should be joining that because you should be adding coaches to your network. So, all right, guys. Have a good rest of your day. Have a great weekend. And I'm here if anybody needs anything. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.